Hello everyone and welcome to my crazy art world. I am Harshi and I will be taking you through few of my favorite paintings and teaching you how to paint them in the easiest way possible. So you might already recognize this painting. It is called The Great Wave of Kanapa which was created by Hokusai in 1831. Uh, it is part of a series which was called 36 Views of Mount Fuji and they all were woodblock prints and they are also called Yukiwe. This video is going to be carried out in four parts. First, we will be setting up and preparing for our painting. Then we will sketch the great wave. Then we will paint the great wave. And finally, we will add the final touches. YouTube is seriously an amazing platform to do this. You can pause and play at any time. You can do it at your own pace. If you think that I am heading a little too fast, you can reduce the speed. Or if you think that I'm going too slow, you can increase the speed. It's pretty good right before we get to the fun part let's go through what are the things that you will be needing today first and foremost you would be needing something to paint on for this video i am painting on a watercolor pad these are from the brand hemi they are of 300 gsm and are made of wood pulp you can paint on any surface of your liking be it canvas general sketchbook notebook anything at all now for the first part we will be sketching our great wave for that you will require a very sharp pencil a kneadable eraser you can use a general eraser as well but i find the kneadable eraser is much neater and an artist table that everyone should have next you'll require a scale or a ruler finally this one is optional but i highly recommend using washi tapes they are amazing to create neat boundaries without being too harsh to the paper after creating the sketch we will add colors to our painting I'm going to use my favorite Hemi gouache paint for this session. Please don't judge me for the condition of my paint. I have been using them for three years extensively. Now, I will be painting with gouache paints, but you can use pretty much any colors of your choice. As the great wave mostly constitutes of just blocks of colors. And also, this painting has a very limited color palette. The colors that I'll be using are sky blue, acid blue, Persian blue, nude color for the sky, white, black and finally mustard color basically we need three shades of blue any shade of sky that you like one color for the boats and a staple black and white next you will be needing brushes to paint with i like to keep it as simple as possible and for this painting we'll be using only three brushes first is a medium size flat brush we will be using this for blocking out large areas like the sky after that we'll be using a small size round brush which we will be using for filling up smaller spaces like the waves and finally because this painting has a lot of details we will be using a liner or rigger brush which we will be using for adding outlines and small details in the waves and on the boats. Now I know outlining can be really intimidating. For that you can use black artist brush pen. This will enable you to create fine artistic outlines without the hassle of a brush. Since we are painting with water based paint we will also be requiring water and I like to keep my water in two separate containers. One for my painting water and second for my cleaning water. You will also require a rough rag to clean your dirty brushes, to clean your workspace and even to clean yourself. I'll also be using a paint palette to prepare my colors before putting it on painting. You can use any kind of palette that works for you. And last but not the least, you will be needing some liquid encouragement. For me, it is my hot cup of mocha, but you can choose whatever you like. That's it. Gather all of your supplies and let's create the great wave of Kanagwa. I usually start my sketch by taping all the four edges with washi tape. This is an optional step but it leaves you with nice clean boundary. Once you are done with this, we will add some reference points. I am using a scale for this but you can eyeball that as well. With your pencil, mark the center point of all the four edges and also find the center of your paper. We are doing this to ensure that our waves are proportionate. In case if you need it, I have also attached reference images of the sketch and the painting in the description. The biggest appeal of this artwork is the balance in its composition. The sky and the wave are proportionate. In fact, if you turn it around, the yin yang nature between the sky and the wave is very evident. The first wave starts a little higher than the center point over here. Its shape is like an S curve with a broader second half. The bottom part of the wave starts a little lower than the center point and then you have to create broad wavy curve to follow the form on the structure. 
It doesn't have to be very exact as right now we are just marking the skeleton of the wave. We will add all the mini details afterwards. The tail of the wave as you can see goes below the center of the paper. So starting from this point on the wave we will make curve going below the center point and touching the right edge a little above the center point. Just like that. Moving on to the second wave, you can see it has a mountain leg structure and it is inclined little on the left side. It also touches the big wave in the center of the paper. Starting from the tip, we make it almost parallel to the bigger wave and then connect it in an arc like this. And the other side is pretty much a curve which ends up in the center of that line. Now we'll mark out the foamy part of this wave. Make a curve starting from the bottom edge like this and then mark few connecting U shape like this to mark the area where you can see the foam. Now we will make a Nike shape curve starting from the foam over here just like that. Next we will sketch the three boats. First sketch the stem of the boat like this and then make the body by just making a slight curve like that. Second boat lies on the top of the first wave we created and the last one is over here. Make a little angular triangle and we are done with the boats. Moving on to the hero of the sketch, Mount Fuji. Starting from almost center of the page, make a triangle which is intersected by the boat like this. And then add some triangles to represent the snowy peak on top of the mountain. Moving on to the details, we will start with the movement in the wave or as I like to call the teeth of the wave. Start to make parallel curves like this. For this wave, the curves will be parallel to this one. Also remember to rotate your curves a little bit as we go further away from the main curve. And after the halfway point, they will almost become horizontal as you can see in the sketch over here. Continue making these horizontal water blobs throughout this wave. And we will continue adding the teeth in the remaining waves as well. Now let's sketch this angelic looking cloud in the sky. Using very light hand, make these clouds because this is going to be the lightest part of your painting. And you don't want the pencil marks to peak after you're done painting. With this, the skeleton is done. Now we are going to add details. Using the skeleton that we just draw as a base, we are going to add some wavy lines to the bubbly part over here. Make these repetitive patterns all over the bottom of the wave. Once you're happy, go over all of your final line with an artist's brush pen or a permanent felt -tip pen. This is also your chance to erase any happy mistakes. Take time and carefully go over all the little details of your painting except for the sky and the light sides of the wave. By the end of this step, your painting will look somewhat like this. One last thing that we are going to add are humans on the boat. For this, make four little ovals from the center of your boat like this and then from the right side, we will add curves to our ovals just like that. Finally, on top of the third oval, we will add two more C shape like that to add the people on the back. Repeat the exact same process on the top boat as well. There are supposed to be 32 humans on this painting, of which due to perspective, waves, etc, only 14 are visible. Now with your kneadable eraser, erase all the pencil marks except for the cloud. I like using kneadable eraser because it is much cleaner, it doesn't leave any residue and it is relatively gentler on the paper. With that, our sketch is ready and we can move on to the next phase which is coloring our painting. Congratulations, you are done with the hardest part of the painting which is sketching it. Now we will do the fun part which is painting it. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I am going to use gouache paint and that is a water based paint. I like to keep two containers of water so it remains relatively clean and the colors that I am using don't suffer because of my dirty water. I also use a palette to prepare my paint before I put it on the canvas. Finally, when it comes to my Heaney gouache paints, I usually spray it with scented water that I prepare at home. I add just one or two drops of concentrated scent to my water and I spray it all over my paint. This leaves my art space, my colors and my painting smelling amazing. The first thing we are going to paint is the sky and for that we will be using a flat medium brush. The most important thing with gouache paint is to prepare it before you put it on the paper. You need to make sure that the consistency of your paint is similar to shampoo or conditioner and it has no lumps at all. So just add few drops of water and mix mix mix. Once you're happy with your paint, while holding your brush like a pencil, go around the boundary of the area that you want to paint in. Now I might sound like a kindergarten teacher but try to remain inside the line. Once you have a clean boundary all around, just fill everything in. Clean your brush completely to start painting the second half of the sky. For this, we will be beginning with plain white color and as we move towards a wave, we will keep making our colors slightly gray. 
to create that ombre effect in the clouds. To mix the colors properly, try to maintain the same left to right directional move. Also clean your brush every few seconds so it doesn't contaminate the light part of the shaded area. Next, take mustard color and medium brown brush to paint in our boats. Block entire boat area with this mustard color. We will paint the little area that I have left on the first boat with a lighter mustard color by just adding a little bit of white to the original mustard color of the boat. Moving on to the lightest blue color, we will take sky blue and little bit of white to mix a lighter shade of blue possible. Using the small round brush, we will be filling this blue color under the wave. To create shadow in the foamy area, just like I'm doing over here. You will also be adding this light color in the big blobby area, just like I did over here. Most of the part of this painting is pretty much like painting with numbers. So just make the border and fill everything in. You can pause the video over here and fill the blue color in all the places that I have before we move on to the next blue color. The areas that we will be painting now are going to be very small. So I am moving to a detailing brush. I'm using my acid blue color in the Hemi Quash set. It's really important to hold this brush like a pencil. It gives you more control. I also use my pinky a lot when I'm doing the details. Instead of resting my entire arm, I just rest my pinky to get the support. And last thing that I do while I'm doing details is stop breathing. It might sound strange, but it really suits my body and I'm able to make straighter, less wobbly lines. This process is equally meditative and I absolutely love it. Now is the time for you to pause the video and paint the darker blue color in all the places that I have. Now the final color and the biggest reason that this painting was so popular is the Persian blue pigment. At that time in the Edo period, Persian blue was a newly invented pigment and was very rare. The use of shades of Persian blue in this print made it extremely popular. Using the small round brush or the liner brush, start blocking Persian blue in all the areas that I am. Please make sure to keep adding water and keeping the consistency of the color nice and smooth if you see white grainy dots like this while you are painting you are probably not adding enough water now is your chance to pause the video and fill in the darkest blue color in all the areas that i have and with that we are done coloring the painting now we will move on to the last part which is adding finishing touches you have been doing really well for the last part, we will be using a liner brush and black color to do the outlines. With the outlines, it's really important that our color is really watered down. And then using the same no breathing technique, we are going to do outlines on all the areas that we did after sketching. Also, before you start to do any of the outlines, make sure that the entire painting is nice and dry. You don't want to smudge your masterpiece in hurry. So take a break, stretch your legs, drink something, eat something and come back when you're painting painting is completely dry. It is also a good idea if you are not comfortable with brush to switch to a fine felt tip pen or an artist brush pen. This will make your life so much easier. I will continue using the brush but you can use whatever you are comfortable with. This is your chance to pause the video and complete the outline. Once you are done with the outline, we will add white dots around the wave to represent water droplets. I am using my liner brush to do so and I am keeping my brush really perpendicular to the paper and quickly making dots all around the wave alternatively you can also use the back of the brush to do the same this has to be the most fun part of this painting continue adding these dots of various size under each wave also you can use a white color to cover up any errors on your painting and that's it your painting is complete this painting is not just beautiful to look at it in a way symbolizes all of us navigating through the struggles of life and no matter how difficult the things get we always have something consistent in our life be it family our values just like the serene and beautiful mount fuji in the background behind all the chaos happening in this painting this great wave of kanagawa has come a long way from the shores of japan and its symbolism holds true even hundreds of years later I hope that this beautiful painting and this art session has brought some sort of balance to your life and if not given you a little bit of encouragement towards art and if you find something, anything difficult, if you break them down into steps and just take one step at a time, you can achieve anything. Also, before I let you guys go, please share your beautiful creations with me on any of the social media. Tag Art by Hershey so I can see your beautiful creations as well. And if you have liked this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye!